So how do you level your ollie? You will be able to pop down the tail and raise the nose after some practice. But then, you need to push the nose forward to level out your board. Push the nose forward with your front foot. The action sounds simple, so why is it so hard? In fact, you can't simply push your front foot forward without paying attention to other elements of this trick, such as the movement of your back foot and weight distribution. Let's scientifically break it down with why the trick. First of all, when you want to push the nose, your board must be able to move freely, so to speak in a set of free-floating. And it can't move no matter how hard you try it, if you pressurize it unnecessarily. For example, as a common problem, if you press the nose while your back foot is applying a force to pop down the tail, you can't move your board. This is because the energy the nose receives increases proportionally to the power that you apply to the tail. In other words, the harder you push down the tail, the heavier the nose becomes while your back foot is on the tail. So, if you want to move your board when your back foot is pressing down the tail to lift your body weight, your front foot has to generate more energy than your back foot. But obviously, that is impossible. Your back foot generates significantly more power than your front foot, as it can directly stomp down the ground using your body weight. Due to the said reasons, you need to have your back foot not pushing down the tail by the time you slide up your front foot. As you can't pull up your back foot when your body is standing still, you first have to have your body weight going up before pulling up your back foot. Use both your thighs and focus on pushing down your board evenly. As I said in the previous video, your board stays horizontally flat in this step because you'll be exerting a downward force on both of your feet evenly. It is absolutely essential to understand jumping is different from popping. Popping is an action of hitting the tail against the ground using the movement of your ankle after having your body in the air. While jumping, obviously, is to bring your weight upward. Without understanding this difference, you might kick down the tail with your entire leg. Then, your back foot will remain on the tail unnecessarily longer as your body stays low. Once again, you can't push the nose, no matter how you use your front foot, while pressing down the tail. So, make sure to lift your body weight first, and keep the tail of your board a snap of your ankle. This way, you can bring up your back foot easier. Going back to the use of the upper body, the role of the upper body doesn't end here. After getting in the air, it also determines how easily you can pull up your back foot. The point is, conservation of energy applies here too. Gosh, I used to hate this when I was a student. What would you do when you want to pull up your back foot? Understandably, you might think you should jump up as high as possible, but that could be why you can't lift your back foot. A common mistake is lifting your upper body too much or jumping up too high. In order to understand why you should avoid jumping up too high, let's first imagine what happens when you're trying to reach higher. You'd kick down the ground as hard as possible, and after getting into the air, you'd have to extend your lower body to raise your upper body higher. This way, you can harness the momentum of the reaction. As your lower body goes lower, your upper body tries to offset the energy by going in the other direction. A similar thing can happen in an ollie too. It may be counterintuitive, but if you want to lift your back foot higher, lowering your upper body might help. Theoretically, when one side of an object moves mid-air, the other side moves in the other direction to conserve the sum of the object's energy. To apply this concept in an ollie, you want to lower your upper body and lift up your back foot in a way that you compress your body at the peak of your ollie. Furthermore, you can tell that you can't push the nose of your board when you jump up too high if you think about it this way. When you jump up too high and extend your body, 
your body brings up your front foot with it. In other words, while you are trying to push your front foot forward, your body's momentum pulls it in the other direction. This is also why you should not overextend your body. So, to lift your back foot effectively, try to think about it this way. You may kick down the ground as hard as you want, but avoid letting your upper body go higher than the height you started, and gradually start lowering it as it only gets closer to its peak, which allows you to harness a reaction of your upper body going down, and lift your back foot effectively. With all that ready, it's finally time to move your feet. Push your front foot in the direction you are going, not to the toe side. Pushing your board to the toe side turns your board and makes you lose your balance. Although you must practice extending your front foot, you also have to pay attention to your back foot because your board cannot move as long as your back foot blocks its movement. Try turning your back foot inward to avoid letting it block your board's movement. It is easy for a human leg to bend inward like it naturally do when sitting on the ground. So. If you think you can't push your board forward even when you're trying to, make sure your back foot is not blocking its movement. And if it is, try turning it inward. Lastly, let's talk about landing. Given you could push your board forward, how do you land back on it? If you don't do anything, you will land outside of your board as your body's center of gravity and your board are not aligned. Theoretically, there are two options. It's either putting your board back underneath you, or sending your body forward over your board. Obviously, the second option is impossible unless you can fly. So, eventually you have to go for option number one. And that's when the previous step becomes the most important. According to the previous step, you should turn your back leg inward. Doing so generates tension outside of your leg your back foot will naturally return to the neutral position as you release such tension outside of your leg, which helps you bring your board under your feet. Keep in mind that you should not tilt your body axis. If you push your board forward by leaning backward, you won't be able to get back on your board, because once tilted, the axis will continue tilting in the same direction due to inertia. So always make sure to keep your body axis straight upward. And that's all for this episode. What do you think is the biggest key to leveling your Ollie? Please leave a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time.